So what are your top two or three resets that you find yourself using with your individuals and groups? I have no idea, um, to be totally uh, frank. Um, I try not to have to use those if I don't have to. If I can work these things into activities, if I can move people, and again, we just using like a warm-up activity or something along those lines versus having to do some sort of structured rehab exercise to get people to, to regain their mobility. If I can just do it through uh, some sequence of activities, maybe I do take them to the floor, maybe you do something in all fours and we're, we're regaining the ability to manage the pressures and, and the forces inside the body that way. Some people can't uh, posteriorly rotate their pelvis. They can't expand the posterior rib cage. So there's many ways that, that you can achieve those things without having to do some sort of structured, structured activity. Um, it does help when you can manipulate respiration to some degree because that is one of the, the uh, components of internal pressures that we do have to manage. So um, again, using different positions, um, the, the uh, rolling patterns that were promoted years and years ago are actually a way to actually manipulate some of those pressures. So I'm okay with that. Arm bar progressions are really nice um, to, to teach people how to reach forward and to uh, start to control the, the internal pressures. Uh, and again, you, using respiration as a complement allows you to, to manipulate those things and allows you to access greater ranges of motion. Most people uh, are limited in hip mobility because they, they can't alter position sufficiently um, around the, uh, uh, in regards to the, the joint position to reorient the muscles from concentric, eccentric, or eccentric to concentric. And so that's where those limitations tend to rest. It is, it is rare that you would see somebody with a, a true uh, altered joint structure that would limit someone's capacity to access certain hip motions. Now, there are structural changes. There you know, in regards to the depth of the hip socket or the orientation of the hip socket as a bony position, not just a, a mobility-based position, but they are, they, in, at least in my experience over 28 years, they're a very small percentage of those people that you cannot manipulate in, in regards to changing those positions. So, so I try not to um, default to, to rehab exercises in, in the fitness realm. We went through that phase um, I think we're, we're getting well past that and we're using other forms like just putting someone in a half kneeling position, you know, your chops and your lift patterns um, work just as well as those other activities. And like I said, if you can, if you can include an element of respiration, you'll find that, that you're able to access a lot more mobility in a lot of these people without having to flop them on their backs and, and uh, um, treat them like they're broken because it, it Again, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get away with those, get away from those things. Um, when, these, when the people come in and, and they're much more satisfied in regards to their, uh, their performance, they feel much more successful when they can be more active. And so again, if you can just build those things into the warm up versus you know, having the, uh, the uh, structured rehab activities, I think it works out a lot better.